Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. And I have my Texas friend, Tanya, here today, and she's going to be your Bible teacher. So, <laughs> look, you're so pretty. Thank Thanks. you for being with us today. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, you already know I love you, right? I love you so much. Thanks so for having I'm me I'm going to hand it over to her. You know, it's like passing the football over. So, All go right. with it, girl. Yes, it Let's is. do it. Hey, so today what I want to teach you is two things that I've learned in this book called Disarming Scripture by Derek Flood. Miss Faye gave this book to me when we were in Israel, and I read it a couple of weeks ago, and it's just full of great stuff. I highly recommend it. He's a great author. Okay, so the two things I want to talk to you about is unquestioning obedience and faithful questioning. So what is unfaithful? Uh, unfaithful. Let me say Stop. that again. Un what is unquestioning <laughs> obedience to you? Okay. Unquestioning obedience to me individually mm -hmm. as a person. As far as church and, and belief and Christianity, really what it means to me is just to check my brain at the door mm -hmm. and, and do what, just listen to, believe, whatever is taught in my church by my pastor and my denomination, and I do complete and full obedience to what they say and don't think outside the box. Yeah. Is that... I agree. Okay. I had a couple of situations where I found in Scripture where Jesus was misquoted, um, giving credit to a prophet that didn't say what he was quoting. And when I took that to the pastor, he rebuked me for even questioning it. And then he said, um, it's just a matter of translation. When I questioned further and said, well, what else is mistranslated? Then I was I was almost in trouble, like a principal with a student. I, I left his office. No. Yeah, feeling you don't like do that. I was not worthy to even be yeah. in there and ask like I had yeah. like I was How doubting God in general. It was yeah. it was a bad feeling. Then later in years I continued questioning and I would do my own research, I would do my own studying and later through the years we had um, Jehovah Witnesses come to the house and they had brought something to my attention that I did not know and I couldn't answer on my own with research so I went to the pastor at the time and he rebuked me for even speaking to them telling them that they telling me that they were a cult and that I was not allowed to ever speak to them again so as a and they'll pull you away yeah they'll pull you away into a false religion right and it's almost like you get rebuked and I can Mm -hmm. totally get that I've, I've experienced things like that in a couple of different churches that I've gone to it's like you if you ask leadership to explain something they turn it around and make it sound like that you're not trusting God right and it has nothing to do with God it has to do hey you're a leader and I trust you help me understand this yeah I just want an understanding yeah. in a lot of things but um, anyway, each time that I would go to leadership, I ended up like, just like she was saying, where I was, I was, uh, rebuked and feeling as though I was questioning God or that I was losing my religion because I was asking questions because I just wanted to understand. I had some confusion. There were things I didn't understand. So here's a definition of unquestioning obedience that I want to share with you guys. Unquestioning obedience is total and given without thinking asking questions, or doubting. Like all tyrannical leaders, he demanded unquestioning obedience from his followers. Oh. I just need to ask, does that sound like God to you? Like a sounds, tyrant leader? Oh, it sounds like some churches I've been in. Though. When you read that last sentence about a tyrannical leader, I never thought you would go toward and say, do you see God that way? I My mind went straight to the pulpit. It's just like... Uh, boy, I can name you a lot of them that's treated me that way. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, so, yeah. So, your next question, do you see God as a tyrannical leader? You know, some people have been taught that that is what he demands of us, is unquestioning obedience. And we also hear that extended from the pulpit. They continually repeat that. Um, not all pulpits, I'm not saying that, but a lot of them do in our uh, Protestant Christian world. And so... What about faithful questioning? What does that look like to you? Oh, now that's a good one too. Faithful questioning. Well, that's a term I've never heard until you and I started talking about this book because I was kind of taught there's no such thing as a faithful questioning because when you start questioning things, now you're not being uh, obedient. Yeah, and remember that scripture about don't be like the wave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... So it's like if you are questioning something, you're not being obedient. Mm 
So those are almost like working against each other. But faithful questioning, to me, as an individual, um, I think I think we should always uh, be faithful in our questioning. Um, we should question everything, but be faithful in the way that we ask the question. And I think, as like with me, you know, I would leave church and I would just start talking to my father, and I'm like, "Is this true? Can you help me understand?" And and, and I kind of, I guess, I gave him permission in my faithful way that I was questioning. I was trying to find the truth. Mm -hmm. And it gave him permission to take me by the hand and treat me like I do my little Eli. You know, uh, I'm his gammy. And he just took me by the hand and walks me through things. And he's so kind. And I think faithful questioning is to be faithful. And for me to be faithful in my questioning, I need to look at it and say, okay, does this look like Jesus? Mm -hmm. Is this what Jesus said? Is this what Jesus role modeled? Is this what Jesus taught? And if it doesn't really line up, for me to be faithful to God, really be faithful to my Father, I am required to question, could that be true or not? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna, I want to go back up. When you were talking earlier about uh, faithful questioning, did you know Jesus asked a lot of questions? Mm -hmm. He was faithfully questioning things all the time. And I think he was trying to teach people to start questioning what they have been taught. I think so. When He's you a see prime him. example of faithful questioning. Oh, yeah. And we'll cover that. that this week while we're here. Yeah. I can't wait to wow. share that with you. That's, but there's other faithful questioners in the Bible, and Job was one of those. Ooh. So We've Job, never heard that before. Oh, no. Job was a faithful questioner. His friends were more of the unquestioning obedience. So when True. tragedy came on Job... Um, the prophets, if you look in the Old Testament, there's a zigzag between prophets saying, they pick up and say, if there's tragedy, if there's famine, if there's sickness, if there's disease, it's God's wrath, it's God's punishment, and it's deserved. And there were people that challenged that in the Old Testament. So Job is one of those. His friends are saying, this is all your fault. You had to have done something. He's maintaining his innocence, and he's questioning God like, who are you? What are you? How are you doing this to me? I was faithful to you. What is going on? He's questioning. When God shows up at the end of the scene and he's talking to them, in Job 42, 7, he says, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken truth about me as my servant Job has. And the people that God required to repent were the friends because they were the religious, faithful um, obedience, unquestioning obedience. Yeah, These like, guys were just going to blame Job no matter what. And God comes in and rebukes them. The three friends. The, he rebukes yeah, the three friends. The buddies are in trouble with that's God. That's being so unquestioning obedient and they won't even consider anything outside of what they believe and what right. they've been taught to believe. Right. In the narratives of the Old Testament, you can see over and over that there's suffering and injustice and that over and over prophets give credit to God for that. Some horrible, awful thing, and they're saying this is the judgment, this is God's punishment over and over. But in Psalms and with Job and others, you'll see that he's saying they're calling it unjust and they're saying, no, this isn't right. They confront it. They challenge it. They faithfully question it. Um, wow. The prophets pick it up over and over and over again, and they say That's the true. reason for all of that is because of sin. <sighs> because of sin. So let's look at what Jesus has to say. Are we going to believe Moses, Elijah, Jesus, God? Who are we going to believe? So you've been taught that every word in your Bible is perfect and it doesn't have error, but the Sermon on the Mount kind of challenges that scenario altogether because Jesus over and over and over faithfully is questioning, you have heard it said, but yes. I say. You have seen it written, but I say. So he's questioning and he's challenging what may have been written incorrectly about Well, his it father. was recorded accurately, mm -hmm. right? It's been, okay, so you can't really talk about something like this without getting into that idea of the in, inerrant, uh, infallible and uh, so the Bible actually records faithfully that Job's three friends were wrong in about what they believed mm -hmm. about God but still today Tanya we will go over to that and read what one of his three friends say and say see right here it says God does this mm -hmm. and they're pulling it out of context and doing exactly what Job's three friends did mm -hmm. 
being unquestioning exactly. obedience to what they were taught because they checked their brain out, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I was told God was like. And they're, they're, they're not really being fair to God, but we, you know, we do that. I see that a lot with people. It's like, well, right here in such and such verse, it says this, this, and this about God. And I'm like, yeah, but if you keep reading, it says, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. But we quit reading yeah. a little too early and we get into, but yes, but so the, the Bible has been recorded and yes, it is to help us grow and learn from, but what it does not say, and people are confused about this. Sorry, I'm taking your teaching no, you away from you. What us. people do not consider is what the Bible is showing us is that people can have the wrong attitude, the wrong understanding, and be believing the wrong things about God. Mm -hmm. What if that's what Scripture can teach us and we've never been told we can approach it from that? I think uh, there's plenty of examples of what you're exactly talking yeah. about, of uh, revelation that comes. So, And we'll get into the, some of those as the week goes on too. Yeah. But let's talk about what Jesus has to say about some of the sickness and the famine and all of those things being God's judgment. Because if you look at what he talks about, he says that's the kingdom of darkness. That isn't my father. That's the kingdom of darkness. Right. So he's correcting wrong beliefs that are recorded in the Old Testament about his father. And he's saying... My healing ministry is advancing against the kingdom of darkness. Now, if that was God's punishment and God's judgment on his people because of sin, Jesus would be undoing what his father was putting in place as a spanking for his people. Right. Jesus is coming and saying, no, no, no. What this you believe my about my father is wrong. I'm faithfully questioning what you have to say about my father. And I'm going to heal and I'm going to set free the captive, he's working against a kingdom. It's not his father's kingdom. It's the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. He's coming to set things right. And he, what he's trying to do is make us think about what we're believing about God the Father. And uh, I was telling you that when we were talking earlier, this uh, scripture came to mind, the Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. It's one of my favorite. I've taught a series on what we're touching on. And uh, I'm going to read that real quick. And I'm over in the Amplified Bible. All things have been entrusted to me and delivered to me by my Father. And no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son. That would be Jesus. Jesus is talking here, by the way. Understands the Son itself, the Father. And no one, okay, did you hear the no one part? I heard it. No one fully <laughs> knows and accurately understands the Father except the Son. Okay, did you know the word no one actually includes Adam? Mm -hmm. How about Moses? He's, a, he's one of the no ones that understood the Father mm -hmm. fully, right? And what about Job and even Job's... Now, Job says some Job. true things about God, but then he kind of makes some claims that God corrects him on. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you go through, I mean, no, King David, all, if you look at this in context of what Jesus is saying, no one would include everyone, and that includes all these people in the Old Testament, that had wrong ideas and wrong beliefs about God. Is yeah, that accurate? I agree. Okay, take it 100%. back. 100%. That's faithful questioning right there. So here's some of the examples I want to give you. Um, in Luke 11, 17 through 20, he says his healing ministry is advancing against Satan's kingdom. Second Kings, Second Kings 1, 10, Elijah declares, If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire fell from heaven, and it consumed that captain and his 50 men. Then in Luke 9, 54 through 55, I printed this one for you. Uh, James and John, who were just trying to follow scripture, by the way. I mean, they're just trying to show Jesus. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are students of what has happened in the past. We're following scripture. Let's call down fire and let's get them. Let's destroy them. Mm -hmm. And Jesus rebukes them harshly, saying that they don't know what spirit they're speaking of. So here it is. And when his disciples, James and John, observed this, they said, I'm reading this through the paper, so it's taking Want me, me to read it? Yes. Is this the one where yep. it amplified? And they said, Lord, do you wish us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But Jesus turned and rebuked and so severely censored them, and he said, you do not know what sort of spirit you are. 
For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they journeyed on to another village. And I didn't read the book. Was in nope, it. that's it. But that's, that's, that's where you wanted to go here. That so is. Jesus is actually saying Elijah was wrong. Yep. And I know you want to be like Elijah because he's one of these heroes of the Old Testament, you know, right? Yeah. He, uh, and Jesus is saying, wait a minute. He got that wrong. Mm -hmm. And we see he got it wrong because after he did that more than once, the third time he tried to do the French fry <laughs> lightning rod on people, God stopped him mm -hmm. and said, hey, hey, don't do that. Yeah. But we didn't get it. Did no, and they didn't get it. They didn't no. get it. And we use those uh, genocide scriptures to justify oh. our vengeance on our enemies. Oh, yeah. So you can see the power. So man's idea of God is, always has power attached to it. Power and control, power and control. So the Old Testament, their view of God was power and control, power and control. Jesus comes and he says, I'm love and I'll give my life from you. And then again, today the church sees power and control. We're going to come back and the blood is going to be up to the horse's eyeballs and we're just going to, and he's going to have this huge genocide warrior God and he's going to, he what, came as a lamb, but he's coming back to love in the middle of this. What happened this. to the love? What happened to he's always the same yesterday, today, and forever? And watch, here's what Jesus came. I just love this scripture. We haven't even talked about this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus comes in the middle of all that, and he goes back to the yesterday part of the Old Testament and says, see what you're believing about that? That's not my daddy. Mm -hmm. I'm here to show you my daddy. Yeah. Okay. And then it says he doesn't change. So what in the world are we doing believing the wrong things about God now, yesterday, today, mm -hmm. and forever, meaning all through the future? We, we're just going back and forth, bobbing all over the place, aren't yeah. we? we? We start to resemble... Um, the Jewish nation at the time of Jesus all over again. Oh, yes. I mean, yes. if we Jesus have were to come, yeah, Absolutely. if he were to come today, we would crucify him as a church again because um, the things that he says then were heretic. The things that we have picked back up, just like the prophets picking it up over and over again and saying, this is God, this is God. I watch Dateline. I love Dateline. Maybe... I mean, some of y'all might think that's not Christian, but I love that stuff. I love figuring it out. I love the mystery. I like picking up things that the detectives would know. It just makes me feel like I'm smart, I guess. Sherlock but, Holmes. Yeah, I love it. Sherlock so, Holmes at home. Yeah, at home, <laughs> in my bed, figuring out all the crimes, uh, crime shows. But there's times I've seen Christians um, where their daughters have been raped and killed. And I see Christians telling the audience, God allowed this to happen, mm -hmm. and this is going to all work to the together for the good and it just I, I used to believe that five mm. years ago I yeah. believed that same thing today that absolutely makes me want to vomit mm -hmm. that somebody would say that about my father because now I see Job in a different light and now I see Job as that mama on Dateline saying God did this to you and I wish God would just come in and go pull up your pants and let's talk about this because yeah. what y'all are saying about me isn't true yeah. and let's talk about it. Because that's what he said to Joe. Yeah, he I says, did. I need you to gird up your loins. Oh, and what that means is me you need to man up because we're fixing to have a conversation yeah. because you know you've got some wrong thoughts about me uh, and I need to clear that up. Yeah. And your friends ain't helping you much. No, they're not. They're you're thinking me. wrong and your friends are definitely hurting you in what they believe too. So one thing before we head off for today yeah. is um, Jesus rebuked them, the sons of thunder. Maybe they got their name because they were trying to light somebody's butts up yeah. because they weren't uh, being nice to them. Um, but he, he rebukes them because he's saying to them, I'm with you. Do you not see him in me? You yeah. don't know my father in me. You're still trying to do a genocide God. And yeah. I'm showing you my father looks like this. You got to see it. He's expecting them and telling them to faithfully question what they thought they knew mm -hmm. about God in the Old Testament scriptures. Did you know, I don't think, and this probably is going to be harsh, so you'll, you'll tenderize it before we <laughs> sign off here today. Uh, I think sometimes when we get to the point that we have unquestioning obedience to what our pastor, our church, our denomination, or whatever has been handed down to us through tradition and doctrines of men actually put us in a little bitty box mm -hmm. 
And then we try to get God small enough to fit in that box. Jeez. And we're not actually being faithful in our questioning because if it's not good, it's not God. If it's not love, it's not God. And Jesus tried to come and change the way that we thought about his Father so that we could walk closer to his Father. And here's the main part. Okay, This is what you're going to tenderize for me. <laughs> Did you know when I block myself off and will not think outside of what I've been taught and I won't uh, ask questions, I have absolutely stopped the Spirit of God from teaching me and me growing. I am going to be a, a Christian 40 years running, sitting in the same pew in the same church, believing the same things, being cold and dead inside because I squelched and, and tampered with, dampened down the Spirit of God and would not receive new understanding. And, and I didn't grow. I didn't grow. I'm just sitting there like a five-year-old in adult clothes. And uh, so the harsh part is I think that when we are not faithful in our questioning and saying, hey, does this look like Jesus? Is this what Jesus said? Or did Jesus disagree with that? We have actually put ourselves in a box where we cannot grow. I agree. I don't think that's hard. You did pull, before you go, I want you to oh. talk about this scripture because oh. you did, I know you, you wanted to talk about I that. Did. Let's, let's close for that with that because I think this is an awesome okay, scripture. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, where's our, right here. So yes. I'm going to show you this one more time because that without thinking and without asking questions or without doubting, the unquestioning obedience oftentimes told by our pastors that we need to just obey and not the, question it. The message is given to us yeah, by leaders. Yeah, you don't question that because God said it. If they said it, God said it. Well, here's another scripture that I'd like. You got it to read? Hmm, let's see. Oh, it's uh, Mark twelve thirty. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Yes. So mind is a form of worship. We have been programmed as a following, as the lambs, to be dumb sheep and just follow blindly wherever the shepherd goes. But our shepherds behind the pulpit don't know everything. And, and they shouldn't yeah, be angry if you question them. If you question them, because they can grow mm -hmm. through your questions. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes, I mean, leaders get really offended and angry and start attacking people because you're not in your place. Yeah. And you need to stop doing that. You don't question what we teach here. And that's not faithful questioning. And it certainly is not loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, and with our mind. Because we're supposed to use our minds mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Right? Yeah. If, we're, if you're not worshiping him with your mind, you're missing a big piece of who he is. If it's not love, it's not God. He doesn't have to partner with evil to teach you a lesson so that it can all work together for his good. Yeah. That's that's really sad. Yeah, that's another it? subject matter. Isn't <laughs> that, it? That's later this week. That we'll God talk is about going that. to work with evil <laughs> to bring about good. Now for that himself. is really that's something we need to hit on yeah, probably because people have taught that for so many years that God is going to use evil means. So you know, I've got to. Our God, our good loving Father, has got to lower himself down to working through the kingdom of darkness and evil with Satan to accomplish his good end. Mm -hmm. Now that, you got, I'm going to do Andrew Wama. You know, that's so, somebody had to help you get that mixed up. Because <laughs> you couldn't have thought that by yourself. Somebody had to help you get yes. that all twisted up. Yeah. So anyway, so anything else for them today? I think that's it for me. Now listen, guys, we, we weren't trying to get on here. You know, I'm, I'm big on trying to only take up maybe 15 minutes of your time. Uh, but I'm going to take as much advantage of her being here as I can because she and I really we just sit and do faithful questioning and we are faithfully obedient too because we will search scriptures we're going to look at jesus but i just want you to know you know when you get tired of listening to one of us just hit the stop button it's okay but we're gonna we're gonna talk this week we're just gonna have a big time right <laughs> right and we, we're just gonna enjoy this and not get legalistic right with time anyway yes. so we love you i know she yes. loves you i love you and we will see you here Mañana. Tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. Fair yes. enough. See you here tomorrow. I love okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.